Welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. From the days of wooden hulls and cotton sails to our modern era with nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, radar, and satellites, for centuries, those who explore the ocean have returned to land with amazing and sometimes frightening stories that span the spectrum of the incredible. Even including mermaids and giant squid, sailors' most frightening tales concerned rogue waves, freak walls of water that would overwhelm boats and lighthouses out of nowhere, sometimes during calm, still seas. There are ancient and recent stories of these monsters forming from the water with no storm or warning of any kind, then disappearing without a trace. In oceanography, rogue waves are defined by a height more than twice the significant wave height, which is basically the average size of the other neighboring waves floating around at the time. Rogues are totally distinct from tsunamis, which are caused by landslides and earthquakes, and only appear at great heights when they meet land. Tsunamis, or tidal waves, are often almost unnoticeable in the open water. The only ships lost in the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami were in port. These mysterious rogue waves rise up in the middle of the ocean, often out of nowhere, with no storm, landslide, earthquake, or meteor strike. Rogues don't have a distinct cause, and they come without warning. They form because of the strange and unpredictable properties of waves themselves. Constructive interference, superposition, or the stacking of smaller waves into a larger hole. Often, rogue waves are born when faster waves catch up to smaller ones and they coalesce. The concept of rogue waves goes beyond just water, and there are equivalent forms in optics and acoustics referred to as solitons. In 1826, French scientist and naval officer Captain Jules Dumont d'Urville reported a wave as high as 108 feet or 33 meters in the middle of the Indian Ocean. The captain had an impeccable reputation and had three colleagues with him as witnesses, yet he was still publicly ridiculed by the authorities at the time. In that era, for some strange reason, it was widely believed that no wave could exceed 30 feet or 9 meters greater heights were thought to be physically impossible. For centuries, accounts of rogue waves were dismissed as fish stories or conjuring from the drunken imagination. Before there was any hard evidence for their existence, they were considered purely mythical. However, in our wonderful, censor-filled modern era, that is no longer the case. Rogues are now proven to exist, and they're starting to become a well-studied natural ocean phenomenon. I think I'm sensing a pattern in science. First, these things don't exist. They're just myth. Then they're just very rare. They hardly exist. Then, next thing you know, they're common. They're everywhere. We've known it the whole time. There are real monsters. 100-foot waves can rise from calm, still waters without warning. Massive rogue waves have even been spotted in North America's Great Lakes. The loss of the MS Munchen in 1978 provided the first physical evidence of rogue waves. The Munchen was a state-of-the-art cargo ship with multiple watertight compartments and a seasoned, expert crew. The entire boat was lost, along with all crew, and the wreck has never been found. The only trace left was the starboard lifeboat, which was subject to forensic examination. The experts found that the lifeboat had been ripped from the top of the ship. To exert such force, the wave must have been considerably higher than 66 feet, which was the height the lifeboats were secured. At the time of the inquiry, the existence of rogue waves was considered statistically impossible. The maritime court investigation didn't know what to do, and they concluded that severe weather had somehow created an unusual event that had led to the sinking. Since the loss of the Munchen in 1978, rogue waves have now been proven to be the cause of the sudden loss of a number of ships, lighthouses, and oil platforms. The Ocean Ranger 
an offshore drilling unit sank in Canadian waters on the 15th of February in 1982 after an encounter with a rogue wave. The United States National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, compiled a list of more than 50 historical incidents likely associated with rogue waves. However, what really caught the attention of the scientific community was the laser sensor measurement of a rogue wave at the Dropner oil platform in the North Sea on the 1st of January, 1995. This event was called the Dropner wave, recorded at 84 feet or 25 meters. Damage was inflicted on the platform far above sea level, confirming the validity of the digital sensor reading. Rogue waves have since been confirmed by video and photographs, satellite imagery, radar, and oceanographic research vessels. In February 2000, a British research ship, the RRS Discovery, sailing in the Rocktail Trow west of Scotland, encountered the largest wave ever recorded by any scientific instruments in the open ocean, nearly 100 feet or 30 meters. In 2004, scientists using three weeks of radar images from the European Space Agency satellites found 10 rogue waves, each higher than 80 feet. How could a 100-foot wave rise from tranquil waters out of nowhere like a ghost, wreak destruction and havoc before disappearing into the same still water? One simple model for this is captured by the nonlinear Schrodinger equation in physics, in which a wave begins to soak energy from its neighbors, reducing them to minor ripples. This unusual and unstable vampire wave can consume its way to near vertical monster heights before collapsing. In 1861, something happened that mystified everyone at the time, but could only be explained by a rogue wave. Water broke the glass of the Eagle Island Lighthouse and flooded the structure. This implies the wave had risen above the 130-foot cliff and 85-foot tower, or more than 200 feet. This next story, from the 20th century, feels somewhat familiar to me. The RMS Queen Mary. I've actually been aboard this boat since its retirement in Long Beach, California. During operation in 1942, it was broadsided by a nearly 100-foot wave. The impact was so powerful that the ship listed about 52 degrees before slowly righting. Turns out, you're not even safe from rogue waves in a lake. The SS Edmund Fitzgerald was lost on Lake Superior in 1975 after it was overwhelmed by a rogue wave. In 1980, a 100-foot monster wave washed across the deck of the French supertanker SO Languedoc near Durban, South Africa. This time, the rogue was actually photographed by the ship's first mate, Philip Lejour. A few years later, in 1985, the Fastnet Lighthouse was struck by a wave over 150 feet tall. In 1995, the Queen Mary II encountered a 95-foot wave in the North Atlantic. The master said it came out of the darkness and looked like the white cliffs of Dover. Newspaper reports at the time described the cruise liner as attempting to surf the near vertical wave just in order to avoid sinking. Rogue Waves even made reality TV show history in 2005 when one of the ships on Deadliest Catch on the Discovery Channel was blindsided by one in the middle of the night. The 60-foot wave struck the Aleutian Ballad, crippling the vessel and causing it to tip onto one side. This is one of the few video recordings of a rogue wave. In 2006, researchers from the U.S. Naval Institute argued rogue waves may be responsible for the unexplained loss of low-flying aircraft such as U.S. Coast Guard helicopters during search and rescue missions. By 2007, it was further proven via satellite radar imaging that waves with crest to trow heights of 20 to 30 meters or nearly 100 feet occur far more frequently than previously thought. It's now known that rogue waves are a common phenomenon and occur in all the world's oceans, many times a day. Professor Akhmadev 
of the Australian National University has claimed there are about 10 rogue waves in the world's oceans at any moment. The same strange non-linear properties of waves and fluids that give rise to rogue waves can also lead to their opposite. Rogue holes are ghostly empty trenches of water sweeping across the ocean and swallowing ships whole. These inverted rogue waves are empty, evacuated valleys of water. Reports of these were as common as those of rogue waves, but more frequently dismissed as nonsense. A 2012 study supported the existence of these oceanic rogue holes, where the depth of the hole can reach more than twice the significant wave height. Rogue holes have even been replicated in experiments using water wave tanks. These things might be following the same trend as many other phenomena that start off as impossible fantasy and end up accepted as commonplace. I have a feeling we'll hear more about rogue holes in the future. It'll just be one more thing that'll keep me off of a cruise ship. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.